Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, dear friends. Thank you for joining our Cancer, Second Cancer New Moon webinar. This is the 17th webinar in the third cycle of us working with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. For the last four years, every new moon, we would come together, focusing the power our, of our collective intention to magnify and strengthen the thought forms behind the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Today, is the last webinar in the third cycle of this series. And I invite Rebecca Hood to sound the intention of our work. Thank you, Alexander. So we re remind ourselves that our meditation work through the New Moon webinars focused on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals is one of supporting and strengthening a shared vision of formulated thought forms of solution to address the many issues facing humanity and the planet. Our intention is to vitalize thought forms that help to create conditions leading to the transformation of our world through the elevation of human consciousness. As we sound the note of this shared vision through our discussion and meditation work, we support the vibrant activation, consolidation and spread of the will to good throughout humanity. And over to you, Dot, now to um, begin our alignment as we share everyone's voices together in the naming circle. Mm, thank you, Rebecca. And so as we do, as we begin our uh, focus today through this webinar on goal three, health and well-being, uh, in this naming circle, we unite our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into this group work. In uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. And the key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. So what, what we will do, beginning with the uh, vocalizers and uh, organizing group, is your name will be called. And then if you will unmute yourself, please say your name and where you're calling in from. So, for example, Dot Maver calling in from Walpole, New Hampshire, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention through our hearts, through the heart center of the group gathered today, as each one of us calls ourselves into this circle. Daniela. Greetings, everyone. Uh, Daniela, I'm calling in from Croatia. Welcome, Daniela. Helen. Please unmute yourself. Sorry. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I am uh, Helen, and I'm coming in from near London uh, in England. Welcome, Helen. Rebecca. Hello, everyone. And I'm coming in from the east coast of Australia in Queensland. Welcome, Rebecca. Tim. Greetings, everybody. I'm Tim Ewer. I'm 
in Nelson, New Zealand on a lovely winter's morning. <laughs> Welcome, Tim. Tracy. Hello, everyone. I'm Tracy, and I'm coming from Detroit, Michigan area in Novi, USA. And it's actually summer here and a beautiful sunny day. <laughs> Welcome, Tracy. Alexander. Uh, I am calling from Brooklyn, New York in the United States. Welcome, Alexander. Anne-Marie. And please. Yes. yes. Hello, Anne-Marie Skovgaard from Birgerud, Denmark. Welcome, Anne-Marie. Anne Annette. Hello, this is Annette Löfflop from Sorø, Denmark. Welcome, Annette. Barbara. Please unmute yourself, Barbara. Welcome, Barbara. Barclay. Please unmute yourself. Um, yes, sorry. Uh, uh, Barclay Milne from Toronto, Canada. Hello to everyone. Welcome, Barclay. Beata. Hello, everybody. It's Beata from South Africa. Welcome, Beata. Catherine. Catherine Payer from Sydney, Australia. Hello. Welcome, Catherine. Cheryl. Cheryl Dinson, Ames, Iowa, USA. Welcome, Cheryl. Christine. Please unmute yourself, Christine. Welcome, Christine. Claire. Please unmute. Hi, everyone. This is Claire from the South um, Island, Otago Peninsula, New Zealand. Mm, welcome, Claire. Daniel. Daniel. Welcome, Daniel. Darcy. Hello, everyone. This is Darcy calling in from Washington, D.C. area, USA. Welcome, Darcy. Denise. Hello. This is Denise, Manhattan, Kansas, U.S. of A. Welcome, Denise. Thank you. Thank you. Say. Oh, fee. Oh, sorry. Fee Day, Gisborne, New Zealand. Welcome, fee day. Francine. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm uh, from. Uh, saint Amand, a small city near, near Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Welcome, Francine. Frida. Frida? Frida Kemp, uh, Toronto, Canada. Welcome, Frida. Jillian. Hello, Gillian Douglas, Norfolk, UK. Welcome, Gillian. Greta. Hello, Greta from Appletop, Denmark. Welcome, Greta. Joe. Greetings, thanks, and gratitude to the organizers, the focalizers, and participants. 
for these four years. This is Joe Walls today. I'm uh, experiencing a beautiful summer day outside of Portland, Oregon, USA. Mm, welcome, Joe. John. Yes, hello. This is John Sedevi calling from Herman, Missouri, USA. Welcome, John. Yoka. Yoka from Belgium. Hello. Welcome, Yoka. Josette. Hello. I am calling from uh, French in uh, Vosges Mountains. Welcome, Josette. Judith. This is Judith from Budapest, Hungary. Welcome, Judith. Judy. Massachusetts. Uh, Judy Harrison from Brewster, Massachusetts. Welcome, Judy. <laughs> Catherine. Hi, this is Katherine Davison. Thank you to all the organizers from San Antonio, Texas. Welcome, Katherine. Katya. Uh, hi, Katya Kaufman, New York, USA. Welcome, Katya. Lynn. We win Columbus, Ohio, USA. Welcome, Lynn. Margaret. Welcome, Margaret. Mark. Mark. Welcome. Go ahead. Public from Naples, Florida, USA. Uh, will you say your names again, please? Mark and Maria Hubbard. Thank you. Welcome, Mark and Maria. Martha. Hello, everyone. Martha Gallagher, Weehawken, New Jersey, USA. Welcome, Martha. Michael. Blessings, everyone. This is Michael calling in from the big island of Hawaii. Welcome, Michael. Nathaniel. Nathaniel Borgen, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Welcome, Nathaniel. Pablo. Please unmute. Welcome, Pablo. Paul. Uh, this is Paul. I'm over here in Tucson, Arizona, USA. <laughs> Welcome, Paul. Regina. Please unmute. Hi, Regina, calling from Brooklyn, New York, USA. Welcome, Regina. Bria. Welcome, Ria. Risa. Please unmute. Welcome, Risa. Shirley. Welcome, Shirley. Tara. Welcome, Tara. Urania. Please unmute. Welcome, Urania. Anne. Hello. Yes. From Athens, Greece. Welcome, Anne Veronica. 
Thank you, everyone. And now over to you, Helen. Thank you. That was lovely hearing everybody's voice, the sound of the group. I'm offering now an uh, alignment and a healing. And I would like each one of us on this webinar to offer healing to humanity by visualizing soul energy flowing through our own etheric centers into the etheric network whose lines of force and light are the basis of all manifested life and the expression of the essential non-separateness of all life. And I think this picture, which Alexander found, uh, is so, so beautiful and expresses this connectedness between our own centers and our own etheric and the etheric around the world linking us all together. And let us first again focus in our heart centers. Sense the love and wisdom and radiate this to one another. We align from our hearts with the Goddess Mother of the world at the center of the earth. And then upwards from our hearts, aligning with the soul group of world service. We sense here an even finer vibration of loving wisdom and strong, silent will. We visualize soul energy flowing easily through the planes of our minds and emotions to our etheric head centers, just above the top of our heads. and allowing this to link with the whole etheric web and allowing spiritual light to flow to humanity. We visualize soul energy flowing easily through the planes of our minds and emotions to our etheric brow centers between our eyes, linking us with the etheric web and allowing a sense of direction to flow to humanity.
Now we visualize soul energy flowing through the planes of our minds and emotions into our etheric heart centers, just between the shoulder blades. Again, linking us with the etheric web and allowing discrimination and justice to flow to humanity. Visualize soul energy flowing easily through the planes of our minds and emotions and to our etheric throat centers, just at the lower part of our neck. From there, linking with the etheric web and allowing fair sharing for all humanity. Clean air to breathe. Enough food to sustain. Clean water to drink. and truthful communication between all members of humanity, whatever their role. We visualize soul energy flowing through the planes of our minds and emotions to our etheric solar plexus centers, just above our belly buttons. Through this center, linking again with the etheric web and allowing aspiration and balanced emotional health for all humanity. Visualize group soul energy flowing through the planes of our minds and emotions to our etheric sacral centers, just above the bony sacrum. The center again links in to the group etheric and allows for tolerant relationships. 
relationships, sexual health and respect, and safe childbirth and childhoods for all. And finally, visualize soul energy flowing through to our etheric base centers, right at the bottom of our spines, linking with the etheric web and allowing freedom from unnecessary fears and access to the basics of a good, healthy life and well-being for all peoples. May the love of the one soul focused in this group, radiate through us and through every member of humanity, healing, soothing, strengthening, and dissipating all that hinders service and good health. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. It'll take us a moment to come back from that strong focused meditation and so we'd like to hand the microphone over to you now Tim um, to speak to us a little about your work and thoughts for, for the health and just bear with us while we share screen, everybody. Thank you. <clears throat> and thank you to the organizers uh, for inviting me uh, to be part of this meeting today. Um, I'm going to briefly talk about some of the concepts of uh, a more integrated model of healthcare. Um, the slide I hope you can see we're starting with is putting forward that goal three, which is to ensure healthy lives and promote well being for all at all ages. And thank you, Helen, for that lovely meditation because in it you mentioned some of the fundamentals for that the idea of clean air and clean water. And I'd add to those things uh, a nourishing diet, um, adequate shelter and good sanitations as all basic physical components of health and well-being, uh, which I'm not going to specifically talk about now, but I think they are fundamental and it's good to note them at the beginning. Uh, for my part, uh, as an integrative medicine physician, I thought I would talk about some of the components of that as a model for promoting good health. And this slide is just a rather nice presentation of the 
many different components that can be involved in that process. And what I'll do is go through, and I thought it would be appropriate to mention some of the uh, kind of definitions of what I'm trying to put across, because that gives you the, 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 um, the environment for this. So um, I'll just see if I can get my, yes, that's grand. So there are definitions, and the idea of viewing the patients as whole people with minds and spirits as well as bodies, and including all of these dimensions as part of the diagnosis and treatment. And likewise, a similar uh, definition um, that it is a comprehensive primary care system that emphasizes wellness and healing of the whole person, the bio, psycho, socio, spiritual dimensions, as major goals and above and beyond the suppression of basic disease. And I thought um, I quite like uh, this definition, and this is one by Albert Ann Einstein, and he's bringing in a much greater perspective, uh, which I rather like, and saying, a human being is part of the whole called by us universe, a part limited in time and space. We express ourselves, our thoughts and feelings, as something separated from the rest, a kind of optical illusion of consciousness. Our task must surely be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circle of compassion to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. And I think this rather beautifully uh, expresses the larger picture, um, which brings me to some thoughts by Larry Dossi, again, which gives an idea of how, oh, just by the way, before I start that, there's a picture there and it's of some significance. This is one of the glaciers in New Zealand, Franz Josef Glacier, uh, coming down, it's about 12 kilometers long but of significance uh, where it stops um, that's where it stopped moving forwards in 2008 and it has regressed back one kilometer since then uh, which is thought to be entirely due to global warming so just an example of what we as humans in in our development are probably causing to nature but to move on to larry dossi um, he came across the idea of era one, two, and three, and I think this is just another nice model to get a sense of where we can go with health and well-being. Era one is really the fundamental, almost Victorian era of medicine. Era two relates to what has developed in the last century since the 1950s, and era three is the last few decades, if you like, or where it's where we're heading towards. So. Allopathic meaning ordinary medicine, holistic is the era too, and the idea of global health uh, being fundamental to what we're talking about. Going from the different models of it, going through to the idea of system theory rather than the ordinary linear approach. I won't go through all of these in, in great detail, but it gives you a kind of way of seeing a progress that we're trying to achieve as, as we develop new models. Um, as we go through this, uh, perhaps one I'll just uh, stop at in a moment. Uh, this one here that the idea is that the therapist is responsible for our healthcare going to the patient being responsible to really being society and the bigger um, world view. And finally, as we probably understand through the esoteric studies, the idea of going from physical to psychosocial to spiritual as the ways of trying to achieve these goals. Uh, I thought I'd bring this in. This is from a conference I went to a number of years ago in Boulder, and I just love the title. It said, The Science of the Miraculous light, sound, and subtle energy in the healing process. And for me, this has been uh, an underlying 
um, motivation to look at other models because particularly from the esoteric perspective of the idea of light, color, sound and vibration, I think these are fundamental ways of moving ourselves forward. And just as an example, I rather liked, some of you may know about the Global Consciousness Project, which is this idea of putting across the world uh, small random generation uh, uh, computers that continuously put out random numbers. And this information is collected worldwide and has been for many years now. And what they have found is when dramatic events occur around the world, such as 9-11, at the bottom, the red part and the, the black line that it goes along is the normal random distribution. And what they found at the time of that uh, event is that there was a dramatic change in the randomness uh, as the world took on the horror of what had happened. Um, but at the same time, it can be very noble things. And this is a similar graph that relates to an event in 2003 where we got together to meditate and demonstrate for peace around the world. And at the exact time of when the meditation started, the graph started to go away from randomness and show this positive um, process, showing that as a world, through our consciousness, uh, we can change the etheric nature. And this is the interface with science showing that, which for me is a, is a very special understanding because I think, uh, certainly for myself, bringing in the Ray 5 science into this process is, is extremely important. Um, another group I thought I'd bring in because they are in part leading this change in thought form in medicine and in science is the scientific and medical network. And I just put there what their main charter is, and that is they believe in a better, more intelligent and more heart-led world. And that a world in which the wisdom of spirituality and the thoughtfulness of philosophy balance the power of science and technology. And they have a number of other things that, that they have in their scope. Um, I think of importance this year, they have put together, when I say they, a group of over 90 scientists from around the world, uh, 30 different universities, something called the Galileo Commission. And this is a 130 page report that they have put forward to challenge the present scientific paradigm. And I think it's fundamental that this challenge is put forward in order that we can start looking at, if you like, the science of the soul, the, the way of using the resources of science in understanding the much bigger view of spiritual development and consciousness. And if you're interested, I put down at the bottom the um, website for that. So for me, uh, part of how we get to a much greater experience of health and wellness is part of this. And I thought I'd finish um, by just bringing it down to my own experience of how this happens at a, at a basic um, level of expressing it. Tehora uh, in Maori refers to health or oneness. And that's what I call my center. And just very quickly, um, this particular integrative center, which uh, I have put forward, is to try and push some of these ideas ahead you know, in a more of a one-to-one -one basis. And looking at how do we bring in those components of light, color, sound, and vibration. And some of the therapeutic options that, that we offer are these, so things well known to people in the healing area of health, 
but for me a particular interest is using the light using lasers which are now developing at a very fast pace for a number of different things to help people heal in a variety of ways as well as using sound and all the other things that we're familiar with and putting these together as a way of bringing through that subtle component, component as well as the psychosocial and the spiritual. So that's my beginning part, and I'd like to now hand over to Tracy for her to continue on this path. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. That was a lovely presentation, and uh, I loved your important explanations on, on this important topic that we're looking at right now. Um, mine is a little less technical or um, scientific, but it is scientific in an esoteric aspect, what I'd like to talk about. Um, Tracy, you now yep. can share your screen. Yeah, thank yep. you. Thank you. Okay, so for the most part, when we imagine good health and well-being for ourselves and others, most of us visualize a radiant person who is usually phys physically fit and active. But actually, this is a very limiting perspective of the possibilities that this state of being has to offer us. Until we can realize who and what we truly are, basically what our true nature is, we can't really nurture or nourish the infinite potential we hold, both as an individual and as a collective. So now we're gonna be working with the uh, energies of the new moon and cancer, where we are cradled by the qualities that can nourish and nurture ourself and the masses. The key impetus the moon grants us as cancer's exoteric ruler is reflection and response. And through Neptune, which is cancer's esoteric ruler, we have the opportunity to know our oneness through deep spiritual connection. It's through compassion and non-judgment that we can expand our creative imagination towards a new vision of what health and well-being can become as we advance in our human evolution. Although these energies provide us with the support we need to succeed in obtaining good health and well-being, we need to first understand that true healing comes from within not just from a temporary fix we get by relieving symptoms of a disease. Sure, we need vaccines, medication, and treatment plans to help us endure the conditions that immediately confront us. But while these are being employed, we should be focusing our awareness on what caused the disease to begin with so we can work on true healing. If we are to take intelligent action towards health and well being, a good start is to really know and understand the true nature of who and what we are. So let's take a, a, let's take a look at that. As human beings, we're a spark of the divine fire of the Logos, known as a monad. The monad is made up of three energies, fire, magnetism, and electricity. We also know them as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There are 63,000 million monads using our planetary scheme for expression, and they are scattered on the seven planes, part of them moving downward into incarnation, taking on a physical body, and the other half moving out of incarnation, this being a cycle in a continuous flow. Processes of the monad's consciousness elaborate a vehicle we call a soul by sending down a thread or sutratma into the planes of soul. And there it activates permanent atoms, which together draw material to them, forming the causal body or body of the soul. And from the soul, a thread or antikorana is sent down, linking it to the personality, which is the lowest and most physical expression of the monad. Our soul contains the energy of three qualities, spiritual will, spiritual love, and higher abstract mind or thought. The soul serves in it as an intermediary and a transformer for the energies being exchanged between the upper planes of the monad and its lowest counterpart, the personality. 
the experiences and lessons learned by the personality are stored within the permanent atoms. And as the soul recreates a new personality vehicle in each lifetime, these permanent atoms are the foundation banks from which further experiences can be built. The personality vehicle contains a mental body or intellect, an astral emotional body, and finally the physical etheric body. Now that we've looked at the constitution of man, let's take a look at the human energy field, which is multidimensional and operates in a state of dynamic equilibrium. The mental, astral, and physical etheric bodies are constantly at interplay with each other. These energies within each of these bodies continues to rebuild themselves throughout our lifetime. Physiologically speaking, our physical body completely replaces itself our physical body completely replaces itself every three years. Our etheric body can be reconstructed in a matter of days. Our astral emotional body can be reconstructed hourly, and our mental body can be reconstructed in a matter of minutes. Einstein said energy and mass are interchangeable, or as Matta Blavatsky put it, matter is spirit at its lowest level, and spirit is matter at its highest level. Now let's add to this what Nikola Tesla said, that if you want to find the secrets of the universe, you need to think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. While man is a universe in miniature, vibrating and interacting with all the other energies that surround and interpenetrate him. But if for some reason there is any resistance, blockage, or congestion within the flow of these energies, it will be made to expose itself in our life as discord, disease, or even death. We are electromagnetic beings, and with, this, and with this in mind, we know that thoughts are electric and emotions are magnetic. The first maxim of esoteric healing is energy follows thought. Whether consciously or unconsciously, individually or as a collective, we create our reality through our thoughts and emotions. This reminds me of Lao Tzu's saying, watch your thoughts for they become your words. Watch your words for they become your actions. Watch your actions for they become your habits. Watch your habits for they become character. Watch your character for it becomes your destiny. So now that we've looked at the basic principles of our nature, Let's take a look at disease and the role it plays in guiding us towards health and well being. In Isis Unveiled, Madame Blavatsky said that the terms magnetism and magic are synonymous. Our aura is by nature magnetic. And because of this, any defect is made to expose itself. And in the end, all healing is magnetic. So look around and see what is magnetically being attracted into your life, your community and the world. If there is any disharmony, we can be certain that we are not nourishing and nurturing or expressing qualities of truth, beauty or goodness. Dr. Edward Bach said that disease is solely and purely corrective. It is neither vindictive nor cruel, but is the means adopted by our own souls to point out to us our faults to prevent our making greater errors, to hinder us from doing more harm and bringing us back to the path of truth and light from which we should have never strayed. In general, very few diseases arise within the physical body itself. At this stage of our human evolution, most of our troubles arise in the emotional body and the rest in the mental body. But all disease, is attributed to inhibited soul expression. The Tibetan master tells us that diseases fall into five categories. Those that are hereditary diseases, diseases invoked by tendencies in the man himself, contagious diseases, acquired diseases and accidents, and diseases of the mystics. With hereditary diseases, these diseases are inherent in the planet itself and affect humanity due to our contact with the soil and water. They have been developed during past ages in mankind and handed from generation to generation. 
They are characteristic of a specific family and inherited by a person as part of his or her karma, which has been chosen by the soul for this opportunity. Diseases invoked by tendencies in himself have to do with the acquired tendencies that press upon us from astrological influences, such as our sun sign or rising sign. Contagious diseases, either epidemic or endemic, which is what we're facing now with the COVID pandemic, are of group origin and involve man as part of his group karma, but are usually unrelated to a person's karma. Acquired diseases and accidents, they result from unwise habits or injudicious action on the part of the individual. And finally, diseases of the mystics, which are caused by the energy of an awakened and active lower chakra being transferred to a higher center or chakra. So as we know and understand our true nature, we can consciously incorporate the positive qualities of energy offered now during this new moon in Cancer. We can begin to stimulate our health and well-being by becoming aware of our thoughts and emotions and choosing those of a higher order by learning how to respond towards ourself, others, and situations in a heart-centered capacity through that of compassion and non-judgment. We can pay attention to our dreams, visions, and synchronicities, for these are messages given to us from our soul. We can honor the signs and symptoms offered by our physical body that alert us to any imbalances that need to be addressed. And last but not least, by taking account of what really brings joy to us in life and then acting on it. As we align ourselves correctly, we will gain unlimited potential and limitless possibilities to what a state of good health and well being can foster, not only in our personal life, but our communities and the world itself. And as we nurture these practices, they will become our habits. And these habits, will become our character and eventually our destiny, both individually and as a collective. Thank you. Now, Helen will sh share with us some ideas for good health. Over to you, Helen. Thank you. That was uh, two great presentations, thank you. Mm -hmm. I began earlier with an alignment helping us to radiate healing and good health as part of humanity's shared etheric body. Sharing and distribution are, the Tibetan DK tells us, the keynote to good health and the general well-being of humanity. Sharing and distribution. Separation of peoples and claiming of resources like land, food, wealth, medical drugs, and even the separation of allopathic and alternative or holistic and global medicine, all act against sharing and fair distribution. As too does the separation of people from their more subtle group soul lives, as Tracy was explaining to us. She said, inhibited soul life is a basic cause of disease. And as we were listening to Tim too, we heard that integrated medicine and indeed integrated soul personalities are good goals to set for health and well-being. The Uni United Nations Alma Eta Declaration speaks of the need for community participation in situ to bring about good health and well-being for all. And uh, some 40 years on from then, it was noted that people do not always behave the way that the professionals thought they were going to behave. And I think the current pandemic has shown up uh, some of these uh, facts. Things don't always go the way the powers that be think they should. We need to be able to share what others give to us, not just what we want to offer. 
we need to be aware that perfection calls imperfection to the surface. And although acceptance and tolerance of varied people's behavior is needed, we also need discrimination in our approach to primary care worldwide. I would like to just close with the idea that harmlessness is a good guide to how we deal with the world situation. Harmlessness, David D.K. says, a state of mind concerned with the motive behind all activity being good will. Will is involved in harmlessness. Will and action. This is not a time for passivity. In White Magic, the Tibetan says, this realization of harmlessness, let me remind you, will demonstrate in a true comprehension of need, divorced from sentiment and expediency. Harmlessness will demonstrate in a true comprehension of need, divorced from sentiment and expediency. Both Tracy and Tim with the Global Project remind us that energy follows thought. So let us all think harmlessly. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. It's now time for us to go into the new moon meditation. So if you'd like to prepare yourselves and start to quieten and go within. We visualize our group centers as we take a unified breath and align ourselves within the group field. Our hearts unite across distance and we extend our group light to illuminate and experience the loving heart of Gaia that is ever present in the one life. As a group, we lift our consciousness and we look at Mother Earth, Gaia, in all her beauty. And with all the present challenges, and we see the sustainable development goals, a blueprint that countries have agreed upon through the United Nations. We hold this thought form in the group mind as we focus now our attention on goal three, to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. So let us use this goal to ensure healthy lives and promote well being for all at all ages, as our seed thought, as we enter the power of silence together.
as we register our impressions, we see this goal expressing through the development and application of various qualities, initiatives, and desired outcomes as we realize the livingness of no one left behind and build our resilience all over the world. Now we anchor the thought form and distribute the energy gathered as we sound the mantra. Let the forces of light bring illumination to all humankind. Let the spirit of peace be spread abroad. May all those of goodwill everywhere meet in a spirit of cooperation. May forgiveness on the part of all of us be the keynote at this time. Let power attend the efforts of the great ones. So let it be and help us to do our part. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tim and Tracy and Tony, for bringing our hearts and minds together around this goal so beautifully. So we have a little time now. If anyone at all would like to make a contribution or a comment, please raise your hand, unmute yourself, or type into the chat box. I'd love to, to extend our... Re Rebecca, your sound is very faint. Maybe you can... No, I think any... it's better. Yes. Is that better? Yes. Okay. I'm not sure what's going on with my sound today. So um, just repeating, I'm not sure if you heard any of that then. So repeating um, just deep thanks to Tim and Tracy and Helen for such a, a unifying and um, holistic presentation and um, bringing us together around this goal so beautifully and letting everyone know that we are um, now open for conversation around this goal. Um, so please um, click the hand icon and raise your hand and unmute yourself if you would like to speak. Um, and um, you can also type into the chat box as well. Thank you indeed to our uh, presenters, to our uh, triangle of presenters, bringing our group focus so powerfully to the topic of health and expanding it much wider. There is one raised hand, but I believe Pablo raised his hand a while ago, so I'm not sure if you would like to share something or not. If so please, Pablo, unmute yourself. and. Uh, many of us uh, just muted on your own end. I didn't mute you when we went through the sh naming circle. So you can just unmute yourself and please share. And using this pose before someone else shared, just want to 
say one thing that's what uh, really resonated with me in this presentation is that good health is related to um, manifestation of the soul energy. It's the task of the good health in this regard gets very beautiful unfoldment. So thank you. Just a, a quick comment. I um, one of the things I found about the presentations is that I, I found that they were very inspiring. That seeing the emphasis on healthcare on all layers of being, and so the the, the monad, the soul, and the uh, the physical form, and the idea of kind of tying that all together. And I I find that'll be very exciting as this comes out into the the mass consciousness as. Um, you know, and then real, real healing will take place, um, you know, individually and as in terms of collective humanity and, and the planet as a whole. Thank you, John. Katya, you are unmuted. Please unmute yourself. Oh, thank you. That was um, really amazing. Group presentation. And uh, although many, many things were very deeply resonant and uh, I think were very timely introduced to the group. I think two things that I find also deeply resonant to me is the importance of the group life that uh, you have mentioned, and also this subject of harmlessness. Because as you Helen, were leading us in the meditation about clean air and clean water, and uh, I also thought that just the, the thought came to mind of clean and harmless, clean and harmless. And um, the whole idea of thinking and going back again to understanding, deep understanding of what harmlessness is on all layers, I think it's really important. Thank you. Thank each of you for the very, um, very integrated and very synthesizing presentation during the meditation. I was very aware of the wisdom brought forward and the, the images brought forward that were being transmitted through the receiving the thought form and spreading that into the consciousness of humanity. Twofold, one, to be to ignite more soul consciousness and to the fact of the integration of not only SDG 3, but how this relates to all the other SDGs as one synthesizing whole of the um, implementation of the divine plan through the S UN SDGs. And the impact of this particular combined presentation and meditation um, seemed particularly strengthening in the interrelationship of the different planes. Thank you.
Just noticing also, it's Rebecca again, that we have some links posted in the chat box um, for the Galileo Commission um, and some links from Martha. So if you would like to check those out, they're there. Um, yeah. Hi, this is Tracy again. <laughs> um, I just uh, wanted to kind of uh, say something. Tim had mentioned he went to a good uh, seminar with the ICEAM group in Colorado, I believe it was, um, for the sound and frequency type of uh, light therapy and all. And uh, I just wanted to say that there are, in, in some of the Galileo Commission and that. There's so many good groups out there now uh, worldwide that are just bringing so much consciousness to general humanity um, that I think we're kind of on the right path of, of moving forward with this health and well-being and all the sustainable development goals that we're looking at. Um, Seems like it's a really slow process, but this has actually been ongoing for so long, right? I mean, probably since the 60s or even before that uh, in the 50s with, uh, you know, all the new quantum theories and that that have been coming out and starting to prove scientifically because a lot of the allopathic community um, needs to have scientific physical proof. <laughs> So I just wanted to say that I, I love that these groups are being shared um, because there are so many of them out there. I think we all know about heart math and we maybe know about IONS, which is Institute of Noetic Sciences. They are working on consciousness. Um, so many reputable groups out there and heartfelt groups. I just wanted to make note of that. Thanks. So just um, letting you know that there's some maxims for esoteric healing that have been posted in the handout section, um, courtesy of Tracy um, or Douglas Baker, Dr. Douglas Baker via Tracy. So those are also there for you to look at. Um, there's um, a note here from Christine about um, trauma going forward of the world's neglected children will impact us all. I'm not sure if you'd like to say anything about that, Christine, or whether you're able to unmute yourself, but um, just wanting to make that point in the chat box there. I think in a way this question relates to it's one of five types of disease related to hereditary, you know, inherited, accumulated debts, which we can uh, call karma. And that's any traumas of that kind of collective karma is definitely becomes collective karma and expresses itself in one way or another as a disease at some point. And I, resonate with what Christine is sharing with us. So I wonder if anyone has any thought on that. Just I think this is one of the most complex types of disease that comes out of our collective inheritance, an inheritance that is created in, in real time, as the one that Christine mentions with this issue.
I, I wonder if I could add a thought to that, that to some extent, um, we could say that this kind of karmic process uh, relates fundamentally to the lack of equitable sharing of resources to all throughout the earth and that those people would not have to go away to to work outside of their homes if there was that sharing and um, uh, group consciousness that uh, allowed for that to happen. Yeah, it's Rebecca here, and just extending that, that what you're saying, Tim, it's it's um that sort of maxim of my healing is thy healing, and we're all connected. And so, um, whatever the the um, problems are for the whole planet, uh, or anywhere on the planet, is is for the whole planet and for the whole of humanity. So, um, trauma, it's in childhood then resonates through adulthood and then the cycle gets created so uh, it, yeah it, it really is about solving those root problems and the circulation that was being spoken about the importance of that circulation and sharing you know it's interesting if you um if you consider what karma is at its root it's a misqualification of energy, wrong use in energy in some form, whether it's um, thought, spoken word, or action. And so all of this does really tie down to um, our individual use of energy, and then also the use of energy by others. And so I, you know, I think things like this forum and, and people adopting these um, healthy practices, this goes a long way to um, to correcting this use of energy. And I think as that happens, the the karma will, the karma gets burned off or however you look at that, it gets equalized and then it kind of goes away and these, the the planet as a whole and humanity tends to reach a, a greater sense of um, balance and equilibrium. I think that is so true. Um, karma isn't or the playing out of karma is not inevitable we can offset karma by doing the opposite of what caused the problem in the first place so i i think that's very true if we all take care of the sharing of resources and looking after the children that that we can that all helps the whole global situation we can't help everybody but we can help those that we can and be observant of how we share and that will offset it yeah. a note in the chat box uh, mark says please repeat the specifics the physical takes how many days to heal the emotional body takes how long how many days for the mental field to change, which was instantaneous, and what is the source for this info? I know, Tracy, you shared that, and I'll just add that this conversation has me mindful of what's occurring right now on the planet as through this crisis we are waking up to our oneness, to our uh, the truth of the interconnectedness of all, and uh, Tim, when you mentioned the laser and light, you know, and, and we know things aren't going to be healed at the level that they were created or, quote, fixed. And so the recognition of the etheric seems so um, imminent in terms of all of us on the planet at this point. So we'd love to, Tracy, over to you to answer those specific questions, but we'd love to hear your comments um, on that as well. Okay, um, well, to repeat um, what was requested, uh, physiologically, physical body, in other words, that's like the cells 
the organ, you know, the blood, everything. Within three years, it's all been complete. It's all new. It takes three years, but through the breakdown and rebuilding of all those cells and, and structures, every three years we have a new body, basically, physically speaking. Um, when we talk about the etheric body, uh, the etheric body can be reconstructed in a matter of days. And I kind of like to relate that to, like, say if you cut yourself um, and you notice that uh, your body takes a little bit of time for that wound to heal. And usually within a few days, it's healed. Well, it has to do with your um, etheric matrix if everything is in good condition health-wise on all levels, emotional and all that. Um, usually it just takes a matter of days for the etheric matrix to come through because that's what actually creates the physical body, um, which is a conglomeration of the soul's will and our astral emotional aspects, our mental aspects. So that all interplays with that etheric matrix and the permanent atoms and that type of thing. Um, our astral emotional body can reconstruct can reconstruct itself within uh, every hour. Uh, again, you can think about the mood that you're in. Um, you know, sometimes we can change our moods very quickly, but the ripple effect of it takes about an hour for it to um, really change. Um, and our mental body, well, think about your thoughts every split second or so you can have multiple different thoughts and uh, so if you concentrate and focus on the mental thought pattern that you're having you can pretty much change it within a matter of minutes it's very very quick um, I received this information well the medical information about the physical body is pretty much well known throughout the medical community it's just fact medical fact or physical body fact. Um, the etheric body and astral emotional mental body, those type of things, um, I've been studying with Dr. Douglas Baker, who passed away not too long ago, for um, with esoteric healing. And um, I've learned a lot through that and through the um, Institute of uh, the holistic medicine and esoteric healing once again uh fields of consciousness and different um ancient wisdom teachings is where i've gotten the rest of that information also so a combination of that i hope that answered the question yeah thank you tracy and tim can we have a, a request from john can you repeat the quote from tesla if you want to know the universe. I would be more than happy to quote that, uh, repeat that quote, because it's one of my favorite quotes in the whole wide world. <laughs> um, if you want to, to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. I think it also could be used for the secrets of health and well-being, our individual, communal, and collective. Absolutely. I think it has to do with everything in our universe. I mean, everything. Thank you so much. I think we're now coming close, very close to the end of our uh, sharing and our meditation today. I want to thank all who joined us today. This is our co-creation of working on the mental field, strengthening the thought forms behind each goal and I think today's work was amazing. Thank you.
before we close our program today, uh, I want to announce the coming webinars and invite you to join our coming uh, programs. So, as Sun moved yesterday to sign of Leo, we bring our focus to Leo energies and working with the cycle of Leo. And as we come to uh, the Leo Solar Festival, which was hinted in the teachings uh, of the Tibetan master that can be one of the main festivals of the year and being a serious festival, we invite us to bring our collective focus to the topic of restoration of ancient mysteries and there will be uh, so far there are two webinars that are scheduled uh, for august 2nd with zahra indigoronlov uh, to be or not to be and uh, on secrets of ancient mis Egyptian mysteries and uh, how we work as a collective. On August 4th, Uta Gabay will introduce the first of the creative labs, uh, inviting us on a long journey uh, working with the souls of the nations. And this is a new project that Uta and a uh, group in Germany and a group in Jerusalem been working for quite a long time. We invite you to join this. There will be more information in the next couple of weeks coming. And also, considering that this uh, Leo festival is one of the main festivals of the year, there will be additional programs, uh, joint programs with Moria Federation that uh, the 2025 initiative is preparing. So together we will offer to the community uh, joint program, let's put it that way. So it's still uh, in the process of precipitation, uh, and but there is a recognition of the need for the whole community coming together. and. We will try to use this opportunity. And in the next cycle of uh, New Moon, Leo New Moon, there will be no more webinars on the uh, focused on United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, but we recognize the potency of the New Moon, uh, established New Moon cycle rhythm that we've been working for the last more than four years. Uh, and we invite you to join the open forum where we together can reflect on how we could use the potency of this work of magic expressing the inspiration that we receive through the full moon work into the practical work on the ground manifesting the divine plan. So let's come together and reflect on the next phase of our new moon work together. And also the next new moon, we will start the second creative lab on creative translation of the maxims of the ageless wisdom. Uh, it will be uh, yet another creative lab and we invite you to think if there are any creative labs that you or your group could offer to the community and the 2025 initiative will be happy to assist you with technical and logistical support to bring the topic of your service to the community thank you over to you, Dot. Thank you, Alexander. And as we stand in together in the one heart, uh, let us sound together this mantra. 
let the forces of light bring illumination to all human minds. Let the spirit of peace be spread abroad. May all those of goodwill everywhere meet in a spirit of cooperation. May forgiveness on the part of all of us be the keynote at this time. Let power attend the efforts of the great ones. So let it be and help us to do our part. Oh.